What is going on guys? Welcome to today's video. Today we have got a special edition. I've done something a little bit different with the channel today. It's going to be an interview and I've interviewed the average crossfitter, Jack Simmons. So Jack Simmons, really cool guy. You'll see that from the video. He's got his own YouTube channel as well, which is the average crossfitter. I'll put the link in the description below. But here's what we had to discuss all things crossfit. If you're new to the channel and want to stay up to date with the content, please do consider subscribing below and I hope you enjoy the interview you. I've got quite a few planned this week. I've got one with Arm and Hammer tomorrow. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and a couple of athletes later on in the week, but hopefully they'll lead to kind of other things because I know Arm and obviously good pals with like Fakowski and Velna and stuff, so get to that next level sort of thing. Yeah. That was, um, yeah, I think I've just, one thing I didn't really anticipate when I started doing this was like how hard it is. Mate, I honestly, just thought to myself. It's a win-win. And then like, I, I, like, I never thought I'd have the opportunity to like train with Zach and, do you know what I mean, speak to like lean machines and stuff like that. So I've met, I've met, you know, and the cool people from it. And yeah, yeah. It's say like, what do you do? What do you do for a, for a job? I'm, I work in recruitment, IT recruitment. Yeah, so, yeah, so I'm quite, like, still quite yeah, I'm, structured, I'm a structural engineer, so I'm like, I wish fitness was my life more. Yeah. Um, but it's always been something on kind of the back burner, which I, I've always been tempted to go into, um, but never really found like the right time. And like the vlog only started off as a bit of fun. Um, and then off the back of that, I've now um, I've set up Midlands Fitness Games with the owner yeah, from our uh, Box Miles, and like all these all these opportunities that I wouldn't have come about unless I'd because like you kind of get not laughs but like your mates and everyone down the box. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. Like, Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Do you know what it was like? We went to that competition. You was there as well, and you were in the same category as me. And um, I stumbled across that first video, well, one of the first videos you did where you competed and you recorded it and vlogged it of the Body Power Expo. Yes. And that was my like, first introduction of what you were doing. Okay. And I remember being uh, watching it and I, and I was like, I can hear my name. Like the, like the guy was shouting my name out and I was like, oh, I can hear my name. And then all of a sudden I was like, you know, I want to do that. I want to learn. Like there's a creative itch there as well that I wanted to scratch. Like I wanted yeah, yeah. like, I was like how, like, how do you do it? Like, how do you get, like, what do you do? You, you get the footage and you put it on and, you know, pull it together. And then what's kind of evolved for me, which I'm really enjoying is more like, the actual filmmaking of it yeah and storytelling yeah. and how do you construct a vlog to be engaging and I've, I've kind of just got really into that side of things as well now yes. so. I, I was exactly the same I'd, I'd always lo love the idea of putting stuff together like if i ever used to go on my holidays and stuff i'd always take my gopro and film some cool footage but then i'd never do anything with it so i thought do you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna invest in a mac and then i'm gonna try and do it I like my camera is only like a second hand camera and yeah, same here. That's it's like not amazing. The first few vlogs were all done on like iPhones and GoPros. Yeah. Um, and then I brought a second hand camera. And then as soon as I got the Mac, that was kind of like game changer. Like just editing stuff in iMovie. And I was like, oh, this is quite cool. Even if like just, just for me to look back on is quite cool. The fact that now I've like, got like kind of 700 subscribers and stuff like that, which I know in the grand scheme of things isn't much. But to me, it's like fucking hell, I've got 700 people that. I look at that and I think, fucking hell, he's got 700 subscribers and I've got like 150. You can appreciate how hard oh, it is. Because if I like to, like, if my mates ask me, well, how many subscribers you got now? And I go 700, they go, oh, you're still, you're still only on 700. But I'm like, mate, if you knew how hard it was to get to 700, trust me. Because yeah, like, I think I read an article, like, most YouTube channels pack in before they get to a thousand subscribers because it's so difficult to get that first thousand. I think that's why they put the thresholds in. I think they want to create a better platform for themselves where they're getting more quality content. Yeah, because I'd say it's like back in the day, it was probably a bit harder to create content and you only got really serious people. But obviously now it's so easy just to film some on your phone and whack it on there. Yeah, exactly. Getting on in undated with random stuff what about are you, you're in scotland aren't you yeah so like i just tell people i'm from edinburgh but i'm actually like a little bit further north because right. if you say i'm from kearney hill like there's like a farm well, out there and like this fuck all happening do you know what i mean yeah, yeah. but it's pretty nice where we live and it's like edinburgh's pretty good city because it's a world city 
So yeah. there's, there's a lot going on and there's a, there's a big financial district up here as well, which drives a lot of um, business and also a lot of technology startups up here as well. Edinburgh is like a place to be like for yeah. technology. So there's loads yeah, of stuff. I'm, I'm still yet to go. It's a place where I've always wanted to. You should come up. What? got you into crossfit what got me into crossfit Whew. i was having a look around at your facebook and i saw that you had some like physique pictures in it <laughs> like, all right so this lad's done some physique so you, did you do bodybuilding or something like that yeah my back catalog of um of sports is so originally i was always a footballer uh, grew up playing football and rugby played um played football at a decent level when i stopped playing football competitively i then went to boxing and kickboxing and MMA. I did that for probably five years. Where did you train for boxing? So we've got a gym in Newark called Suggers Gym, which is quite a renowned um, kickboxing gym. So, so, so then after that, I just kind of, I've always been in the gym on and off. And I thought, okay, I'll take this a bit more seriously now. And then I, I had an online coach who did um, all my nutrition plans and was going to do a photo shoot at the boxing gym. So we did all that. Um, and then a few months later, I was like, Joe, you know I'm going to, I'm going to try and do it again. So I did it again. And then I carried it on for a few more weeks. And then my, my coach was like me, like, you're ridiculously shredded. You need to do a show. And I was like, I'm not sure that's for me, mate. And he's like, mate, you need to do it. So we did another like four weeks of prep. I think my body felt some like 4.9% or something daft. Did a couple of shows and um, really enjoyed it. But then kind of gave me a bad relationship with food and stuff like that. When I came, because I always used to kind of laugh at CrossFit a little bit, coming from like a gym bodybuilding background. And then when the gym came in New York, I was like, oh, I was to and fro and messaged you only a few times and, and I never went. And then when I did go, I remember I did one session and um, there was me and there's probably four or five other people in the class. I was like, I'll smoke all these. I'm, I'm, I'm fit. I'm not kidding yet. They absolutely destroyed me. There was like a 50 year old bloke who like destroyed me. I was like, oh my God. And because I'm so competitive, I was like, right, I need to get back. I need to get good at that. And then a couple of sessions a week turned into every single evening. It's addictive, doesn't it, the whole process? So addictive, so addictive. And then from that, obviously, I made lots of good friends down there. Got on really well with the boxer now. We've now obviously gone into business together with the Midlands Fitness game. So now <laughs> CrossFit has almost become almost like the main, well, it is kind of the main part of my life, really. It's, a, it's amazing where it's like, because I've done, I was a PT and always been into my fitness. Like I've never got to the kind of levels of where you got like ripped wise or anything like that. Because I've just, I've never been asked like, to, to get done. Yeah, 100%. That's a lot. It, I've done it, kind of got close to it. And then I just like, oh, I'm just going to go back for a few beers. But um, yeah. yeah, I've not had a drink, weirdly enough. I'm not drunk this year. I, honestly, man, I've since, I wouldn't say since cross it, but I don't really drink that much now. Yeah. I'll eat. I'll eat a lot of food. Yeah, I, I, just in, I enjoy the lifestyle of it. And I think that was kind of part of the, partly why I chose the name for the, the channels at Lifestyle Fitness. It's like, what what could I kind of share in terms of like little you know knowledge bombs and stuff like that yeah. to, to other people? And could I influence someone that's maybe not quite as far ahead in their journey to try and help them become just marginally better? Do you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah, it's that knowledge. If you, can help, if you can help one person, then... Yeah, exactly. Like if one person watches it and gets inspired and watches it and gets better and goes on the journey from like whatever it is like or just getting fitter then then brilliant. But I think CrossFit is is a great environment to build adherence for people just to keep training and build a friendship community around them as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Like, well. From the outside looking in, people are like they're all like a bit daunted by it, and I, I can I can see that side of it. But like, once you are in. You, you realize how kind of amazing this like community it's is how everyone wants everyone to do well yeah and that's why like in this like current situation like commercial gyms are struggling and losing members but these um crossfit gyms members like they still don't want that. exactly yeah. because i don't despite the fact i've got a garage gym because yeah i've got a garage gym and i'm like i haven't got my pals though i don't have yeah. i don't have that so the motivation is there when I want it to be there and I've got to push myself through it, but I don't have that community. And I also, like, because I'm quite competitive and I want to beat people, 
like when I'm going to the gym, I want to, not to say necessarily I want to be people. I want to I want to perform yeah. well. You yeah. know, I want to push myself. And quite naturally, there's a competitive element to it. And when you're in the gym, you you perform a, a bit more. And when you don't have that environment, you yeah. don't push yourself as much. I think that's one of the main things I've been say struggling with at home. It's just like the the, the intensity of a workout. It's like I can go through the motions and yeah. get the and stuff like that but there's, there's zero intensity at home not like and it's like without even knowing at the box it's like you go down there and like I want to beat my mate you know what I mean yeah, exactly, he, wants, yeah. he wants to beat me so we're going to go on broken on this set and we're going to see who wins it's push, it pushes you yeah exactly and that, that's what this Zoom has been good for because uh, me and like one of my good mates from the box like, we're just like mate we missed the box man like this is crap and we're sulking I was like well let's just do something about it and let's, let's start just doing some FaceTime workouts just so we do the proper warm-up we do the strength bit we do the actual one rather than just fucking sandbagging the whole workout yeah and then that, that, that turned into like four or five people from the box wanting to jump in then all of a sudden it felt like a, you was having a little class so everyone was there with their cans of knockers taping their hands or having a bit of a chat before we started then we'd do it all together there was a bit of banter flying around I was like ah yeah actually that was all right but to, I've, I've interacted with a few people rather than just you know what I mean like your missus at home yeah it's a lot closer than just you know to that normal environment or that environment that you want then just doing it with no one there at all. It's sort of, this is yeah. great. I think this technology is great because it's kind of pushed me to open, you know, and say, look, do you want to have a quick chat? And then to yeah. other people as well, which is, 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 is brilliant. Outside of lockdown, where do you want to take your CrossFit journey and your YouTube channel? Like you've mentioned that you're quite far ahead with collaborating with the owner and the business side of well, the competition side of things what's the focus is it you as an athlete is it your youtube channel is it maybe opening up your own gym or your competition or is it all of those things combined like you obviously want to advance them all but is there a priority that you have that you want to chase more than than the others yeah so so, so me me as an athlete like I, I wouldn't consider myself as an athlete. Like I crossfit competitively, but I know I'll kind of never be where I want to be. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm nearly thirty now. Realistically, as long as I can get a bit better every day, I'm I'm fine with that and compete with the guys down the box and do a few comps. My main priority at the minute is um, is the Midlands Fitness Games, which myself and Miles um, set up at. Well, it's been going on for months, but we kind of released it in December which is a, a large scale CrossFit comp in the Midlands it's held at like an unreal venue. And the plan is to do um, two or three comps a year with the hopes of them maybe being like a two day comp and then people can stay overnight, just a DJ set one night. Just, I want it to be like a comp like there isn't yeah. a minute in the Midlands. So my priority is growing that and over, hopefully over the next few years that will take care of itself and then hopefully that can be my main focus that can be my main work I can do my job what I do at the minute I could probably do that two or three days a week part-time and then focus on the comp and yeah just carry on training the, the, the YouTube channel I've never I'm not expecting anything to ever come from it I'm, like, I'm not going to expect income or anything like that it's my way of getting to meet some cool people getting to interact with people train with some like ridiculous athletes and just have a good time and if people want to watch it then that's cool but if i can look back in five ten years and go oh look there's me training with a games athlete or there's me training with um so and so and uh, oh yeah that's that's pretty cool or there's me only being able to snatch 60 kilograms when i started but look, here's me snatching 90 like it's a selfish standpoint yeah yeah um, but also like the I've got some really good mates down the box who obviously are massive fans of CrossFit as well and they love some of the athletes that I go and see. So my good mate Alex, he's like a massive Tricky Ricky fan and through this channel, me and Rich are now really good mates. So we like... Do you know what? Like I... I think I don't know. I think I saw him on your vlog first time, and I was like, "Who's this?" Like he looks like a bit of a machine, oh. and um, you start following them on Instagram and stuff like that. And I was like, "He's just like a, a really decent guy." Mate, he's, like, he's such a cool dude, and I think that's why we get on so well. Like there's, there's me, him, and Elliot. Who um, yeah, he's he's, he's really good, really good, isn't he? I think his um, editing is just like slick. Does he do that for a living or something like that? No, 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 no. He works for Sky. For a living but that i mean that's his goal as well so we've met up a few times now and our, our plan is to 
get together, we're going to collaborate everything together rather than just each try and do our own thing. Let's like bring all of us up together, especially if you can like kind of connect with someone as well. It's like I've been, I've been to a few places where like initially you're like, oh, this is going to be so cool. It's going to be so good for the channel. And then you get there and there's not really like a, like a bond or anything. You go, you film a session, you have a good time, but chances are you're probably not going to talk to them much or see them much again. But like when we went to Gritstone with Rich and stuff like that, it was like... Dude, this was epic. Like, we ended up, went out for a Nando's after, invited me to like stay over, was back again within a few months. I was like, this is fucking cool. So now me and Elliot are competing at his comp. Obviously, Rich is going to be MC at my comp. Elliot's going to be filming there. He's got a team in as well. And then all of a sudden, we've got this like cool little group. And it's like, yeah, like, if you've got an idea, we'll help you with that. Or if you've got a good idea, we'll. I think with, with CrossFit, that. the growth of CrossFit and the amount of people participating in it and you know a more engaged community the faster they're all that will grow as well you know the more interest in in things like that yeah yeah like it's like if you ever get a chance to kind of go and see an athlete and you get on so well like i'm not saying like latch onto them but like build each other up like if you've got an athlete who i don't know someone who lives near you or someone up north who who's not got much kind of publicity, like you get together, you can film some cool videos about that athlete. They can kind of build up your work and share your vlogs and video highlights. Like all of a sudden you've got two people kind of chucking like creative ideas at each other. Yeah, exactly. You're going to build each other up and then someone might see that and someone might jump in and go, oh, well, I can help you with that. And then kind of like what we've done with Rich and Elliot, like all of a sudden we've got all these ideas flying around. We're like, man, we're going to do some cool, I was going to do some cool stuff this year, but it's obviously all been yeah it's all been put on. Aid. he said to me the one thing that he feels is missing um that maybe like craig ritchie's not covering because he's obviously busy with his it's channel big dog, yeah, yeah big dog you know in america hanging out with the athletes and stuff like that that um no one's really covering the crossfit competitions in the uk yeah you can yeah. get someone to do obviously what i've got to factor in is i can get very overly enthusiastic about these things and want to do all these great things and then realize well, hold up a second, I've got a job, I've got yeah. a wife, a child, and I live like quite far up north. So yeah, all these you things sound like you're in the exact same boat as me. So like I've got a missus at like at the minute we're renovating the house, we're, we're doing loads of stuff. Then all of a sudden, I'm like, Oh, I'm gonna go to uh, Manchester for the weekend, I'm gonna go and hang out with some athletes, or I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna go and film a comp. And she's like, Really, you've not seen me all week, you've been working, and now you want to come back and do exactly. crossing, yeah. yeah. and then you're editing videos in the evening, it's crossfit, 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 and then obviously they're gonna get sick of it at some point so you kind of got to find that balance but like what you said then um, you kind of like like what Craig Ritchie does is is amazing like we can only aspire to be what, like what he does um to do it for a living as well so like fair play but like you say the the kind of UK CrossFit gets forgotten about a little bit yeah and that's that's why I kind of started the channel like and that's why I called it sort of gap. yeah well, that's why I called it a CrossFit I wanted to relate to your regular dude who's who's working a nine to five job and he needs to go and train in the evening or he needs to go and train at six thirty. Like it's not always going to be easy. It's but yeah, like if, if, if go around watching like some of the UK comps, it'll, it'll be awesome. Like they don't necessarily have to be a big, like huge, big name. That's why I like like going to Second City for example and meeting Jonah. Jonah's like he's an unbelievable athlete, but he's not getting that publicity that I think he deserves. So I, when I saw him at Sid, I was like, do you know what? He probably doesn't want it, but I'm going to ask him to see if he wants to do something. And like, he was so cool. He was like, yeah, man, come up to Birmingham. We'll, we'll train. So like now I, I, I speak to Jonah quite regularly. And then if I can elevate his status by a few hundred yeah. people, that, that, that's awesome. And if you can share my videos of him, then that's even better. And it goes back to you, you have got those relationships relationships you're doing well at it i think you've advanced you're obviously speaking with the you know the lemurs they seem like cool guys as well i've met them once when they went to one of the expos up here i, just, I thought they were pretty cool guys yeah they are this honestly they're so down to earth and um yeah like you have this kind of perception when you meet these people you think oh shit like oh, i'm nervous and at the end of the day they're just normal dudes do you know what i mean they just want to they just want to train they want to help people and they want to have a bit of fun at the same time which is exactly why i did the channel so perfect crossfit worker out and where you know you'll own it i prefer longer kind of chipper style workouts um a 25 not, minute get through as many rounds as you can sort of thing i'm, I'm not a i'm not a big lifter so get the barbell away from me um yeah pistols double unders pistols some porks 
um, kind of box over, we were running or some kind of bike, just kind of endurancey type ones. Yeah. If I could do a workout, what would it be? You go to head to head with anyone apart from maybe Matt Fraser. Well, not <laughs> take those guys out of the equation, but you go going head to head and it's a competition. And you're like, right, that's in my wheelhouse. Pistols and um, handstand push ups. I, I could do them all day. Like, I love the open one with the, um, the deadlifts and the handstand push ups. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, for some reason, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just, um, handstand push ups are one of my strong points. Um, and pistols, for some reason, are right up there so and the one with the pistols and clean and jerks that was quite fun this year what about the thoughts on crossfit as a whole like in terms of the decisions i know you did a vlog recently but decisions like just that decision about holding the games that's one thing but just in general there's been a bit of an overhaul with a lot of the things that do you do you agree with the the routes that crossfit are taking in um in the sport i put uh, Personally, I don't think the game should go ahead. No, I agree with that. And I think all the athletes that have qualified this year should be allowed to compete next year. Should I just postpone it for a year. Yeah, I heard Dave Castro said if we postpone it for another year, then it just gets wiped. I'm like, well, for say for like Zach George, for example, who's worked his bollocks off for three or four years, that doesn't seem fair to me. I so I definitely think that should be cancelled or postponed um, I don't think they should do it at the ranch because it would just be an American throwdown. I, I just don't see the logistics working I mean like how are people supposed to travel I mean it just doesn't make any yeah. logistical yeah. sense at all I think it's quite you could just do but some at that point, yeah. things but we'll just do like maybe an open like instead you know something that you can do or I know they're trying to do stuff like to compensate for that but I just don't think it's the right I think if they do like an online thing or something, that's cool. But like, you can't be crowned the fittest in an no. online competition. Um, but like stuff with, um, I remember when they first got rid of regionals and stuff like that. Everyone was like, I was like, what? I was like, I really wanted to go and watch regionals um, the following year in like Berlin. But then obviously, sanctionals has been amazing. Like, this is the thing. I, I I found that sort of happened at first when I when the announcement got made for the for the sanctionals instead of the regionals and I was like what's everyone moaning about like I think that's fine like it's not a problem and then I saw you know the commentary that people were giving it and all that sort of stuff and I was like I just don't see the issue if, they, if the sport needs to evolve yeah and that's how it evolves like it, that's where it needs to move to I mean like even stuff like CrossFit HQ getting rid of like a lot of their staff and media team that's been amazing for the people who, who got made redundant it's like you look at like the buttery bros and Tommy Marquez and stuff doing like um, talking elite fitness like all these different avenues have now appeared like if they carried on working across it that would have never happened exactly yeah. and you get and now the, like you know in films and stuff so it's exactly and it, it gives another entry point to you know for the likes of you and I or whoever else decides to sort of pop and, and yeah get people's own styles and versions on things and, and yeah you know and it gives the sport more popularity and grows the sport and it's yeah. you know, it kind of feeds off feeds off it at the minute you've got like Matt Fraser like and Tia Claire Toomey which it look you know, is a part of me it's like it, look, I'm, I'm really happy that they win like it's fantastic but why is nobody taking that top spot from them why are they allowing it to I remember going to the games in 2015 like actually physically went to the games it, like, it was a great experience we had the whole holiday and stuff like that and Ben Smith won it that year against Matt Fraser. Like Matt Fraser just kind of messed up a few things. Mm. And that was the year that he said he felt like he lost, like even even though he got second place. But I'm like, everyone knows he's going to dominate. Yeah. Everyone knows that Tia Claire Toomey is going to dominate. Why has nobody pushed themselves to beat him? Like, because it is getting not necessarily boring, but it is a little bit. Like, I think, I think it's just them to push them. They, they still want it that bad. Uh, I think that's the beauty. There's the beauty that to it. And I think that's why they're so likable as well. It's like you know full well Matt Fraser is busting his ass every single day. Even though he's like four time champ, you know he's working his bollocks off and you know he's like it's got it's gotta be he's not gonna give it away. It's gotta be taken from him, so he's gonna do everything in his power to The thing is what I what I think about Matt Fraser is like, you know, he's evolved as an individual over the over the years and it's been great to see him advancing as an athlete and winning and all that sort of stuff. But you think to yourself, like, with all of these commitments, these additional commitments he has, like, with sponsors with Nike and all that sort of stuff, like, 
there's an element of me thinking he's going to drop the ball here. You know, he's going to, it's going to be a point where he's, he gets complacent. And then yeah. year on year, he just, he doesn't. I think that's why, yeah, I think that's why he's so good because he doesn't, um, doesn't, he doesn't drop the ball at all. Yeah. yeah. And he's I think all the time what happened in the past, like, let's say, coming second to Ben Smith, that feeling of losing, it, it's going to keep spurring him on. Yeah, he said that's the best thing that happened to him. Well, that's all from me and Jack. I do have a couple of other interviews lined up via Zoom. I think it's a great way to get some content out there, especially on the lockdown just now. So Zoom is a fantastic platform for us to be able to connect and do that with and still discuss things, all things CrossFit. We were joined by another guest and it was that little thing here. So hopefully that can play soon because it's uh, quite annoying and frustrating. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Um, if you did, please do consider consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.